Ah, I'm having a bit of a break from scenery this week and working on the last wagon style that I wanted for this layout, the Chorus Slab Trestle Wagon. And loads. Hi guys. So for the final time for this series, these kits from Dundas Models are on the workbench. Unlike the other Chorus kits, these are white metal, not plastic, but the principles for building them are the same, it's just slightly heavier. The first job is to prepare the parts for the build. Being white metal, a file does the job. The main culprits to look out for are flashing, which is extra metal that seeps between the two parts of the mould during the production process, and the areas where the white metal is poured through into the mould but these can both be removed with a file. These little V's will form the middle support of the wagon and show a small amount of flashing to remove, but on the whole these kits are really nicely cast and have little work needed. The sides of the frame only needed the ends filed. Oh, and the axle boxes opened up a bit. Though so far I haven't built a kit that doesn't require this for smooth running, so I'll let them off. Some of the parts, such as the wooden poles that are used to secure the slate loads, are too fine for filing as it risks breaking them off, so I'll just cut the excess off with a sharp knife. We're on to the build. I find super glue is perfectly adequate for this small white metal kit, so I'll use it. The first parts to join together are the main body of the wagon and the frame sides. The main thing to look out for here is to check that your frame side is at a right angle to the main body. The second side is now added. The V supports are next and the tops need to be level going forward, so make sure they are sitting level now to avoid a world of pain later. So this piece is the top brace. It has four little holes, suited for the tips of the Vs. I find that they don't really fit unless you open them up a bit with a pin drill. This part can now get glued on. I'm pressing down along the part to make sure it's a close fit. The wagon also comes with brakes, which add the only bit of underframe detail available, so let's glue them on. On some kits the brakes foul the wheel sets really easily, but not on this one mate, don't even sweat it. The kit provides a small square of black plaster card, and you can use this to make the boards on which the slate sit. I went for 4mm wide or two 2mm boards. The second thing to make out of this are the little wedges that hold the boards up at an angle. I haven't actually measured these, I'm just cutting small rough pieces. You won't actually be able to see them when the wagon's built, so it doesn't really matter too much. These are glued on first, four on each side matching the frame layout. Before I glue the running boards on, a file is dragged along them to make some wood texture. And then these can be glued on. You can see the effect of the little wedges. It's exciting stuff. The slate supporting wooden pole things, I don't have the official title to hand, are added next and are bent slightly toward the middle of the wagon. I'll hold the build there as this is the ideal time to paint it, so the cotton bud is glued onto the base of the wagon to act as a thrifty hand. The model is first sprayed a coat of grey primer.
and then two coats of, say it with me everyone, miniature paints number 82 earth brown. Well done, for the main colour. I need to age the wood so the whole wagon is dry brushed with light antique white. you can see the difference between the dry brush model and the not dry brush model. The next step is the black wash. And I've had a few viewers contact me about this step, so I'll go over it a bit in detail. So to start off, the paint is school quality acrylic. This basically means that it's probably weak or diluted compared to the big posh makes. This is applied neat to the model. And as you can see, I apply it really thick, which minimises the risk of it drying before I get to it. And now I can start washing off the black. This starts as soon as I've finished applying the black, if not sooner. Of course, that's a little joke to lighten the mood there. I can't actually take it off if I haven't applied it. For this, I grab a clean brush and I start applying fresh water. I always wipe the brush on the kitchen roll before I grab more water on the brush just to help with the clean water application. You can see how quickly I run over the wagon. I'm not even hitting every last tiny bit of the wagon, it's just a general fast wipe over. The water that's now on the model will continue to do the work after you stop fiddling with it, so pop the wagon down to dry off. And the last point I'd make here is to make sure that the wagon is drying off on a level surface, so that any weathering that the black wash leaves is level as well. If you're not happy with the finish that you get when it's dry, Wetting a clean brush and rubbing over the offending area will reactivate the acrylic paint so you can fine tune it. With the black wash fully dry, I go back with the same black and start applying paint over any of the ironwork, or body parts that would be black. This includes the straps around the dumb buffers, the axle boxes, rivets and number plate. Now speaking of numbers, I don't actually have actual chorus ones, so I'll just pop on this generic GWR water slide transfer in its place and we'll say no more about it. Now these are obviously bright white, so they do need toning down to match the weathered state of the wagon. So the acrylic black is watered down and applied over the transfer. I'll now highlight the river detail. Now I've been pulled up on this and this is a war modelling technique, but it adds some life to the model. It's the model version of theatre makeup. It's stupid if you met them in the street, but it looks great at a distance, if that makes sense. I decided to weather these wagons further than the other styles I've built in this series, so I'm going to add a lot of rust pigment. This is applied over any metalwork and a surrounded area where the staining would seep. The next detail to add is the wire that holds the wooden poles together. You can use miniature chain but I find that it's so small the thread looks fine. A drop of superglue is added to the tips of the poles and the thread is wrapped around the first one, then the second. Snips can then be used to cut off the excess. The thread can now be weathered in the same rust pigment as before. This is mixed with a drop of water to aid application. These are the last vehicles to receive my fiddly homemade little hook and chain couplings. Thank God. So a hole is drilled into the ends of the wagon with a pin drill. The couplings are pushed into place and a drop of superglue on their tips to secure them. The wheel sets are now added. Keep an eye on these as one wheel is insulated and the other isn't, so make sure that you've got them on the same side of the wagon to prevent shorting. A quick push on the workbench to check if it rolls freely. Ah look, it rolls freely. Finally, the brake lever is added. 
This was left until now, as having it on the wagon before would have made the dry brushing and weathering process difficult. It was sprayed with a black primer, and now it's glued onto the wagon, it's painted with the black acrylic. The observant Chorus fans among you may have noticed that I've modelled the wagon as carrying a load. So I'm going to make a load. In prototype, these wagons were designed to carry large slabs of slate. So I'll make these in a similar way to the slate fences. Starting by cutting out strips of plastic card of various widths. These can then be split down into separate slate slabs. I want to paint these all in one go, so I've decided to add a small drop of superglue to the bottoms and stick them to a base. This way I can hold them easily and the paint covers the complete slab. Well, not the bottom, but you won't see that. Putting them on an angle just helps to get good coverage with the airbrush. They have had a quick coat of black primer, and now the main colour is being added. This is the same deco art slate colour as I've used on the fences. It makes sense that all the slate is the same colour as it's coming from the same quarry up the line. The slate slabs are dry so they can be snapped off at the support. The slabs are now dry brushed. The same colour as the wagon itself. As it's just an off-white, it works on top of any colour. It's time to arrange the slabs on the wagon. Larger at the back, going smaller towards the front. I'm dry fitting them at the moment, but when I'm happy with the arrangement, I'll add a drop of super glue between them. The very last thing to add are the little wooden wedges that are used to fill any gap in front of the slate loads, giving them a tight fit on the wagon. This is the same black plastic card that came with the wagon. I've glued them onto the slate loads first and then painted them with earth brown. Being a black plastic card underneath, it's not too much of an issue if you don't cover all around the edge, as it'll just look like a shadow. Yeah, I think that'll do it. These wagons are the last vehicles to be made for this project. Well, until Backman decide to release their Sir Handle, and then 4Ds decide to make a Falcon body for that Sir Handle. In fact, that's due this September. Hmm, watch this space. I know I say this at the end of every update, but these wagons really give a chorus vibe and a great contrast to the other wagons. As they're all open iron or wooden bodies, they're similar in style, but not these bad boys. And watching them running in a train, the difference looks great. So here are some things you should watch. They might be good, they might be terrible, only you can decide. It, it's the first option, they're good. Cheers.